Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the lunch and conversation, as brief as it might have seemed. Um, we're really delighted to have Governor Gray Davis to kick off the afternoon session. Um, and so I will turn the mic over to Citrus Director Costa Spanos to provide that introduction. Thank you, Camille. As the 37th uh, governor of California, Joseph, or Gray Davis, as he's, he's known to us, made education a top priority, signing legislation to strengthen California's K-12 system. He increased accountability in schools and expanded access to higher education with a record number of scholarships and college loans. Davis makes record investments in infrastructure, creating the four centers of science and innovation for on UC campuses, Citrus being one of them, and he expanded state health insurance for an additional one million children. Gray Davis showed amazing environmental leadership by signing the first law in the nation to reduce global warming and greenhouse gases. So with that, I would like to welcome Governor Gravis, Davis. Thank you, Costas. I'm, um, congratulations on being the new director at Citrus. We're all very proud of you, and we had a chance to visit with you and uh, your predecessor, Paul, and, and uh, Larry Smarr, and some other uh, critical um, members of the four institutes up and down the state. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Director Spanis for his uh, leadership in taking over from Paul Wright. Uh, I want to thank uh, Camille Crittenden, who serves as the Deputy Director, but also Director of Citrus's uh, Connected Communities Initiative. I want to thank all the researchers who are here, all the members of the uh, business community that partner uh, with Citrus and other institutes. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Larry Smarr, who's done a fantastic job with Cal IT Squared. Uh, um, the San Diego piece of that is called Qualcomm Institute. Uh, I may just give you a little um, flashback there. I, I, I told Larry this. So I'm sitting with, uh, standing with um, um, the president of MIT and uh, Erwin Jacobs. And the president of MIT says, I'm not really here to speak to the National Institute, uh, of S the National Symposium Institute tomorrow. I'm here to see what you and, and Qualcomm are cooking up at this institute. If we like it, we're gonna copy you. Uh, I said, oh, well, that's terrific. Um, but th that was the first uh, institute we put online. Uh, so I, I wanna thank um, uh, Larry Smarr, as I mentioned, Paul Wright, uh, your, um, first director, or one of your first directors, uh, uh, Director Beachy, your uh, energy dean, Dean Sastry, who had lunch with us, uh, all the partners from the UC Office of President who have uh, been terrific, and I, I personally thank them for the continuing support. Representatives from the Citrus's founding corporate partners, including IBM and Microsoft, and I believe Marvel, and all the close friends of the university, both from the public and private sector, who, who have joined to make this um, Institute a big success. So 15 years of achievement and innovation is, is no small matter, and I think it deserves a round of applause. So please. Uh, as governor, my highest priorities were to keep California at the forefront of higher education, opportunity, and innovation. Uh, that's why I proposed these four institutes in, in 2000. They are public-private partnerships. Almost each, almost every institute has a couple uh, uh, private sponsors that provide funding along with uh, national grants. For instance, the Nanosystem Institute at UCLA has uh, Hewlett Packard and Intel. Um, you have uh, Microsoft, uh, uh, as I mentioned, um, and Marvell. Um, and e each, uh, each institute has a slightly different mission but their problem is really to collaborate with 20 or 25 schools on campus, from media to drama to public health to engineering, to the math department gets all kinds of different eyes and ears focused on a problem in the hopes of coming up with a new insight, a new innovation, and hopefully something that helps people in their daily lives, whether it's fighting a disease or making their life more um, more comfortable or more productive or predicting uh, uh, 
the likelihood of a drought by having better forecasting data. All that information is useful to, and, and valuable to California and contributes to our, contributes to our economic well, well-being. Now, Citrus's primary mission uh, is to look at some of the big global problems and see if they can apply uh, technology in a way that uh, minimizes the problems or, or solves them entirely. This morning you heard talk about advances in robotics, machine learning, education, emerging maker movement. Prior to that, Citrus has already put into the marketplace projects that have a positive effect on everyone's lives every day. Telemedicine has done a lot and we predict it will do a lot more. Uh, there's 850 sites um, licensed, uh, about half of those uh, up and running, providing doctors and patients in rural areas uh, real-time access to doctors in urban areas that might be able to give them new insights or guidance as to how to treat a particular patient. This has saved lives and definitely improved health care in rural areas. Uh, on the drought, the Sierra snowpack sensor movement, by, I ran into Professor Steve Glazer. I told him he has a counterpart in the state senate. Um, he didn't respond to that. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm sure he thought it was a step down, and I, I, I would agree with that. Um, one thing, I, uh, I get together with two other governors all the time, and I was with Arnold the other day. One thing the governors all agree on, Republican, Democrat, it was never the governor's fault. Never. <laughs> anyway, the Sierra snowpack sensors um, measure um, um, water resources, help water resources forecasting, by, with sensors that track snowpack, snowpack depth, depth, water storage in soil, uh, stream flow, and water use by vegetation. This information is critical to understanding our water resources uh, and providing more efficient use of them. On energy, uh, energy innovation on, in new buildings and existing buildings. This is a big passion for the governor. He started way back in the 70s when I worked for him as his chief aide. Uh, very concerned about uh, more energy secure buildings, less energy leaking from buildings, and every five years every governor has to review all the regulations uh, on building uh, and a whole, whole variety of other regulations to see if they can't be improved to uh, secure even more energy efficiency. So he began that initiative. You're, you're carrying on that uh, uh, at Citrus. Also sensors for gas pipelines. We know about the terrible explosion in San Bruno. There's tons of pipelines all under the Bay Area, all under California. And the more information we know about wear and tear and any potential um, repair, rehabilitation to prevent a terrible accident uh, is very much in the public interest. Finally, the demand response project. This is for appliances in industry as well as in the home. They have real-time connectivity. Uh, with the source of energy. The whole idea is to avoid any more blackouts and to give uh, either individuals or corporations the opportunity to make intelligent, um, uh, economically efficient decisions about when they use energy and how much. I also want to give a shout out to Marvell um, Nanolab. Uh, they've taken over the, um, what used to be the micro lab uh, after 50 years of innovation. Um, they, they're building in more than 50 years of innovation. Uh, one of their uh, interesting and, and novel concepts is the accelero accelerometer, um, which is a device used in airbags, as, as well as the development of FinFET uh, transistors, devices used in cutting edge chips around the globe. Um, let me just speak uh, for a moment or two about the Citrus Foundry and the other efforts you've used uh, here at Citrus for incubation. Because it's not just good science I had in mind. Good science is the predicate to innovation. But it's also uh, starting new companies, uh, getting them off the ground, giving them a, a place to be a home for a while before they uh, uh, go out and locate someplace else. And you've got 50, 60 different companies uh, over the life of Citrus that are now uh, in existence, uh, contributing to the economy of the East Bay, uh, and also um, providing uh, useful uh, innovations in, in, in their particular field. I'll just mention three. Knox Medical Diagnostics uh, developed pediatric uh, spirometers, which are very helpful in managing childhood asthma. Uh, Corterra uh, Neurotechnology, which has implantable electronic devices to treat neuropsychiatric, 
psychiatric disorders, uh, and Timber Technologies, which is a pioneer in semiconductor technology. Now, finally, let me just um, make a couple points that I think are really important. The I want to give you a sense of why I came up with these, this notion of four institutes and why I championed this way back in 2000. So I'm sitting in um, um, Alan Greenspan's office. He's then the Fed, uh, head of the Fed in uh, December of 2000. And I'm trying to get advice on the energy crisis. Um, I didn't make a lot of progress in that regard. But he said, look, I, want, I don't want you to feel sorry for yourself. You have a hell of a lot of good things going for you in California. For example, he said, you have more research universities than any other state by far. I was unaware of that. He said, then we had 12, now we have 13. He said, nine UC campuses, uh, Caltech, Stanford, and USC. Compared to Massachusetts, they have seven. No other state has more than five. So he said, if you want to grow your economy, just invest in those research universities. And that was the first thought percolating in my mind that if we ever had a surplus, um, that might be uh, a place I want to invest money. Lo and behold, April of next year, we had $13 million, we, a billion dollars we didn't expect. Uh, and that gave us the resources to start the uh, four institute. Another uh, natural advantage that California has. The University of California by itself uh, generates four times, 400% more patents, not just than any other university in America, but all the universities combined in the next state, which is not Massachusetts, but New York. Thirdly, California is far and away the largest recipient of venture capital in this country. As a matter of fact, last year and two of the last four years, California has received more venture capital than, the than all the other 49 states combined. Let me say that again. California's received more venture capital two of the last four years than all of the other 49 states combined. That means if you're an investor in Boston or New York City, you have a better chance to make money if you invest in a California startup than if you invest in a Massachusetts or New York startup. So those are three natural advantages. It's very hard for any other state to, uh, to compete with. And we have had, uh, these institutes have had visitors from people all over the world. At, uh, Cal IT down in San Diego. There have been folks from Saudi Arabia, uh, Japan. They very much want to copy what we're doing. And after a while, they say, we just don't have the innovation gene. We're just going to give you money and see if you can figure it out for us. Uh, at Citrus, we've had people from London, um, from Europe. Same thing. Uh, they don't have the uh, innovation gene. Uh, now, what do I mean by that? Well, I think it's really, it's really the, the natural advantages I listed, but then a couple intangibles. I was born in New York City, first 11 years of my life. I lived there, been out here ever since. Um, there's sort of a natural tendency if you're working on something, you say, well, let me, let me finish it and I'll show you. You go to a restaurant in Palo Alto or Berkeley and everyone is showing everyone else their new app and what do you think about this? How could this be better? Give me your ideas. What are you working on? Well, have you ever thought of this? You want to change it up? Just totally open and collaborative just figuring out, uh, just assuming that the byproduct of all this interaction and exchange and collaboration will be a better idea that will help everybody. So this openness, collaboration is something very unique to Cal California, uh, very much um, in our uh, DNA. Um, so here we are in 2015 with a lot of achievement and uh, success under our belt but I'm convinced our, our best days are ahead of us. And so I just want to close with this thought, that we in California are blessed with this great gift and responsibility of helping to invent the world's future. If you just look around the East Bay from Apple, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Marvel, Instagram, just every, every week two or three new companies are popping up, uh, that is a great tribute to the culture of Northern California and the culture in California. But so we are the trustees of this gift, but we have a responsibility to use it wisely. Let us always remember to honor and thank the technology pioneers who paved the way for us, and let us encourage and support financially and urge the legislature to support all the young researchers at these four institutes who carry our hopes and dreams into the future.
Thank you.